This is your evening news update for Thursday, October 21. Government today announced an ease in restrictions for fully vaccinated travellers. Starting Sunday, fully vaccinated travellers with a negative pre-flight PCR test will no longer be required to take a COVID-19 test or quarantine on arrival. Health Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick announced the move today. He said travellers meeting these requirements will be therefore allowed to leave the port of entry with no restrictions. However, travellers are advised that the Chief Medical Officer reserves the right to request COVID-19 testing of any travellers and to quarantine them if required. But the proposed move is not sitting well with the Democratic Labour Party. At a news conference today, DLP President Verla Tapiza charged that government was not doing enough to secure the island's borders. She proposed that travel protocols should be tightened and not relaxed. Of controls at the borders is necessary. It is not enough for the minister to say that we have strong measures at our borders and that we are catching them at the borders. The fact of the matter is, is that COVID got into the community because it was brought to Barbados. So therefore we need to have that containment at the borders to be at its strongest. And once again, we need to be following the science where those quarantine protocols are concerned with traveling. Because at the end of the day, we catch at the tourist dollar and spend it on health. And that cannot have a positive effect on our economy. The DLP also described government's move to implement safe zones as premature. The PISA suggests it will lead to division. Safe zones are a concept that you could probably talk about months down the road when we have a higher vaccination rate. But right now, when you're talking about safe zones, you're actually talking about segregating the society, almost splitting it down in half. Because when I look at the numbers, we are barely scraping 50% fully vaccinated. And that means that when you're speaking about a safe zone, you're talking about excluding half of the society. That cannot be a meaningful solution at this time. There has to be a policy and a focus on breaking the transmission now in the short term and not only speaking about long-term or even medium-term measures. What are you going to do now? The current spike in coronavirus cases shows no sign of abating, with 392 cases confirmed from the 2,830 tests. The new positives comprise 68 people who are under the age of 18 and 324 who are 18 years and older. 617 people are in isolation facilities and 3,666 are in home isolation. Since March last year, Barbados has recorded 14,236 confirmed COVID-19 cases and 124 people have died. With tens of thousands of COVID-19 vaccines set to expire within the next two months, health authorities are hoping to use them to provide booster shots. Speaking at a press conference today, co-coordinator of the National COVID-19 Vaccination Campaign, Dr. Elizabeth Ferdinand says, the booster shots will initially be made available to people who are over the age of 70, people who are immunocompromised and frontline workers who are exposed to high risk. We know that in many other cases of diseases that vaccines are not 100% effective all the time. So there's always a necessity to do a booster. We do boosters for polio. We have five and six different, I mean, doses of polio. We have boosters for tetanus. We have boosters for most of the vaccines. So this is no different. When we started, we did not know if we would need boosters. But what is happening, we see it in America, we see it in Canada, in UK, all around, that there's breakthrough big cases. In other words, the cases are occurring in higher numbers again, and even in people who are vaccinated. So it means that the immunity is waning, and we're using a six-month period as the waning period. So we're using a booster to stimulate and boost those people who have already had two doses. When asked about the current vaccination target, Dr. Ferdinand disclosed that it is far from the target of 50,000 vaccinations in five weeks, as set out by Prime Minister Miam Hotley. 
I'm not happy with the uptake rate. The uptake rate is still very slow. And yes, we were waiting until everybody was completely vaccinated, but then we would be waiting and waiting and waiting because not enough people are coming forward. So we have decided to go forward, especially as I said, at this time when we are getting so many cases and some of the people who have been fully vaccinated, a few of them are also coming down with the COVID. Thank God, not as a serious um, disease, but they're still catching it and increasing our numbers. Volcanic smoke from the La Palma volcano in the Canary Islands was visible here today, prompting the local Barbados Meteorological Service to issue an advisory. Senior meteorologist Raquel Davis provided this update. Volcanic smoke from La Palma Canary Islands located just off the northwestern coast of Africa is causing a reduction in visibility across Barbados and the marine area. The public is advised to note that the intensity of the volcanic smoke will vary over the next few days once eruptions continue. Key messages, persons with respiratory issues or allergies should ensure that they travel with or have close to hand all prescribed relevant medication. Mariners are advised to take note of the reduction in visibility and monitor the situation closely along with forecasts for any possible deterioration. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings, in Trinidad and Tobago, the Electoral College today voted down an opposition-led motion aimed at impeaching Paula May Wheat's opposition legislators, constantly disrupted the proceedings, shouting that democracy is dead. After the proceedings, PM Rowley addressed the media. Today they were totally disrespectful to the Speaker on numerous occasions. And I'm sure... Speakers who served in the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago, seeing that today, would tell you, the members of the media, that they would not have tolerated that from anybody in their time. But they wanted that. They wanted the Speaker to put them out of the house today. One of them. And then they all walked out and then say they put a motion to, to impeach the President. And, and what? When, um, some of them said, what? The, the Prime Minister is hiding behind the Speaker's coattail. This Prime Minister is hiding behind no jacket, no coattail. I said for six years I ran this country. They never had it within them to bring a vote of no confidence in the parliament. They want so much of debate. They want to debate, they want to debate, they want to debate. Where is the vote of no confidence in the prime minister or the government that you say is so bad? On the international front, Southwest Airlines posted a smaller than expected loss for the third quarter and said profits would remain elusive in the current quarter as mounting costs are expected to offset improved travel bookings. More in this report from Reuters TV. The bumpy ride isn't over at Southwest Airlines. The massive flight cancellations that bedeviled the carrier earlier this month are expected to dent its top line and mounting costs could hurt its bottom line. The airline said Thursday its October revenue could take a $75 million hit from those cancellations that it blamed at the time on air traffic issues and bad weather. Those cancellations were also partly due to staff shortages, which forced it to rein in its capacity plans. The carrier had earlier added flights, betting that an easing of health crisis restrictions would boost demand for air travel. 
Southwest now expects capacity will fall about 6% in the first quarter compared to the same period before the health crisis in 2019. What's more, costs will likely rise and that's expected to offset the improvement in travel bookings it has seen since late September. It expects expenses to jump by up to 12% in the current quarter as it boosts staffing, doles out incentive pay for vaccinations and battles inflation. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.